Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Matt Bernier. The DRF Bets Race of the Day for Wednesday, August the 15th, race number five at Del Mar. We're going 11 furlongs on the turf for the CTT and TOC Handicap, and you can play that race with a DRF Bets account. Sign up, get 10 times the bonus. You bet 20, you get 200. DRF.com forward slash bet is where you need to go for more information. Here's the field for the CTT and TOC. We're going a mile and three eighths again on the turf. $75,000 is the purse. You can access free formulator pass performances on the Race of the Day event page at DRF.com. Download them, handicap along with us. We begin, Matt, in post position order with the one Fahan Mura. She has won five out of her last six races, the only loss coming in graded stakes competition, and we know where she'll be early, out in front. Yeah, she's going to be winging it out on the front end. You brought up the fact that she's just been in raging form. She she hasn't lost in Southern California. I mean, ever since Vladimir Sarin got her out there, she's really just turned into a different animal. And, and really, the hallmark of her sort of running style is not only is she going to be on the front end, she's probably going to be well clear on the front end, just open up on the field and try to bottom them out. To me, the concern for her, if there is a concern, is do you think that she'll handle the distance? Because the, the speed and the form that she's in, there's no questions there. The question comes down to how far does she want to go? That's really the whole key. You're absolutely right. You look at the pedigree, English Channel, out of a Giants Causeway mare, maybe with the right setup, she goes a mile and three-eighths. The right setup for her, though, is to try to just bottom out the field. As we see from the Time Form U.S. pace projector, we are expecting a fast pace. Fahan Moore is going to blast out of there and go as fast as she can, as far as she can. I didn't think much of the Osanitas on July the 20th, but just this just seems like a good field for Fahan Mora. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's no killers in this spot. It's not like there's any of those real long distance superstars in Southern California. And again, really, we've talked about it time and time again. Many of those middle distance horses that are at their best, if they can stretch out in distance, they're probably just more talented than the horses that are forced to go longer because they can't go shorter distance. Another filly stretching out in distance is the number two Vexatious, who is sitting second on our time form U.S. pace projector. And I have a feeling that Neil Drysdale's always wanted to stretch this one out. She's by Giants Causeway. It's now her third start of the form cycle. Let's be honest, she's been a little bit of an underachiever throughout her career, but she's coming out of a solid non-winners of one other than Race. I know you're a big fan of that horse meal ticket who came back to win last week as you're out of the gate best bet with a 92 buyer speed figure. I have a feeling Vexatious is going to improve. She's just had her little share of problems and now with three races uh, since the layoff line without another layoff, I think she's over her problems. Yeah, you know, I think the other thing, too, to keep in mind is that pace projector. I think that could be a beautiful thing if that's how it works out and you like Vexatious because let's just say Fahan Mora finds the distance too much. I think Vexatious, I agree with you. I don't think the distance is going to be a problem for her. I think she'll be able to go on with it. And if you think there's a scenario where she just inherits this thing, she could be very, very interesting. And it could be a square price, 4-1 to one on the morning line. Richard Baltus has the three Space Cadet in here, but he also has the morning line favorite, the six Queen Blossom. And Space Cadet was no match for Queen Blossom when they last faced each other in the grade three Santa Barbara. Space Cadet just, to me, seems like more of an optional claiming, non-winners of two other than type. But she does have a little bit of speed. And while she doesn't have Fahan Mura speed, I wonder if Baltus is going to try to soften up Fahan Mura with this one. Yeah, to me, it almost feels like she is a bit of a rabbit in a spot like this. The times that they have tried to stretch her out, I know she has won at a mile and a quarter in the past, but recently she just hasn't been able to finish in those races where she's been forward. I think she's forward again here in this spot, possibly helps setting it up for the uncoupled stablemate. Ambo Selly, the number four, just didn't fire last time out in the Osanitas. Fahan Mora set a legitimate pace, and she just hovered near the back of the field. I mean, she is capable on her very best day of running big figs, but she's the kind of mare that runs to the level of her competition. You throw her in a graded stakes race, she'll run well. You throw her in an optional claiming race, she'll run well. She just never wins. She hasn't won in about two years or so. She needs a lot of pace up front. She certainly does. And the other thing that kind of concerns me about Ambicelli, you brought up that most recent start in the Asanitas. Usually, as you alluded to, she'll run to her competition. She didn't fire in the Asanitas, and that's usually not her. To me, it almost makes me wonder if she's starting to go off form a little bit. Evo Campo is also a little bit one-paced in the Osanitas, but a mile and a sixteenth is probably too short for her. She's going to get the stretch out that she desires. She ran well in the San Juan Capistrano at 14 furlongs. That might have actually been a little bit too far. You go back to that Astra back in January. A race like that might be good enough to pull off a mild upset. 
that's you know we talked about her when we went over the Asanitas back what was it opening day or opening week anyway out at Del Mar it felt like that was nothing more than a means to an end to get her to a longer distance race I think this is the race probably that they had circled all along now the question comes down to do you think that she's good enough and do you think she can still fire one of her better efforts to run with the main contenders in here I happen to think she has a puncher's chance Fahan Mura the horse to catch Queen Blossom arguably the horse to beat winner of the Santa Barbara 12 furlongs two starts back I think Flavian Pratt gave that pace setter plain air a little bit too much respect last time out in the possibly perfect. They went a legitimate pace for that mile and a quarter. 47-3, 12-3. Queen Blossom was right on top of plain air, put her away, and then got run down in the shadow of the wire by cause for commotion. I think she sits off as she did in the Santa Barbara this time around and makes one run. Agreed. I, I do kind of wonder if the sort of uh, there were small differences in the running style, but there was a significant difference in the fact that I felt like Queen Blossom is probably a little bit better sitting just off as opposed to going up there and trying to push the pace. Now you have that uncoupled stable mate that figures to be forwardly placed, pushing Fahan Mora. The distance isn't going to be a problem for her. She makes a lot of sense. Fool's Paradise completes this field of seven pre-scratches and program changes. She has only raced once on the turf previously. That was way back in January sprinting. She had the misfortune to catch Twinette, who came back to win her one exit Keeneland with an 88, then the grade three Edgewood with a 91. The jury's still out as to how good Fool's Paradise is. You know she's going to be a price. Yeah, I, I, but you know what, though, from the connection standpoint, I don't really fault them for taking a shot in a race like this where probably there's a number of girls that don't really want to go this far, and some of them, they're suspect as far as quality and actual form is concerned. If you're going to take a shot, take a shot here. Maybe you can get a stakes place. Let's take a look at our top picks for Wednesday's DRF Bets Race of the Day. You're going with Evo Campo. It's all about distance. She has races that can easily win this. And really, it felt to me like that Asanitas was nothing more than let's just get a race into her, stretch her out in distance. Patty Gallagher's number second off the bench. They've been pretty strong over the past two years or so. Uh, I just think this is a scenario where also maybe she's going to get a little lost in the shuffle, where recently her form might not look that strong. I think this is what she wants to do. Maybe she can't win, but maybe she finishes second or third at a square number. Give me numbers. Five, one, six, two. I think Queen Blossom getting back to a mile and a half, mild class relief, and with a little bit more of a patient ride, is just a little better than these horses. And I'm going to take her on top of Fahan Moore, very logical numbers for me, 6, 1, 5, and 4 in the CTT and TOC Handicap, Wednesday's DRF Bets Race of the Day. And if you sign up for a new DRF Bets account, you immediately get 10 times the sign-up bonus. Bet 20, get 200. Head on over to drf.com forward slash bet for all the details. Approximate post time for the feature at Delmar on Wednesday, 4 o'clock Pacific. Best of luck.